As you can see here, I've gone ahead and lubricated all four pistons with assembly lube uh, liberally. I suppose there's a possibility of using too much assembly lube, but like in most things in life, you just got to use common sense. I slathered on pretty, pretty good on the pistons and the rings. The crown or the top of the piston doesn't necessarily have assembly lube, but it was inevitable in the process of trying to do the rings and the skirts of the pistons and the body of the piston that it would get on the, on the top. I'm not going to be too worried about that. I'll, I might wipe some of that off. In fact, I will wipe some of it off before I go ahead and put the head on when I'm at that stage, but right now I'm not going to be concerned about it. But use good common sense when you're putting assembly lube on. Uh, any moving parts. Um, be liberal but use common sense. Here's the assembly lube by the way that I use. It's Permatex Ultra Slick Engine Assembly Lube. I've used this for quite a long time, this product. A bottle of this isn't very big. It's four ounces but uh, it'll last you a good long time. I've had this for probably four or three or four years now. So that's the assembly lube that I use. Very happy with it. Here's the cylinder block. I've just completed lubricating each cylinder with that assembly lube that I showed a moment ago. So each cylinder has been well coated from both ends, evenly spread, so it'll make it easy for the pistons and rings to slip down inside of the bores when I drop the cylinder on top of the pistons. You can see here the, the reddish color in each of the bores. The next step was to get the cam chain out of the way so I can prepare to lower the block. You can see here I pulled the uh, brass tube. I lowered the chain down easily over the front of the block. I did hook a piece of wire to it as you can see here I think in the video and then I looped that over the top of the frame. Uh, that'll be probably the most complicated that and getting the rings uh, into the cylinder as I lower it. Uh, once I get the block started down, then I'll have to fish the wire up through the inside of the cam chain tunnel so I can get the chain out as I lower the block down. So that'll take a little bit of thought and a little bit of finessing, but uh, in the meantime I had to get the chain down underneath where I'm going to have to place the cylinder block and then uh, start the lowering of the block itself. So I have the cylinder block ready to go back on. I know this is the, the rear of the block right here because this is where the cam chain tensioner fits in yeah, for a cam chain adjustment and that is always pointed to the rear. So what I got to do is get it over the studs like so and start to lower it down. And the key here is to help the rings seat without breaking any of them. And if done carefully and squarely, generally we're going quite well. Just gotta take your time, get the piston square. There's a very generous chamfer or lead in on the bottom of the barrels that make this process easy. You really don't, if you do it right, you really don't need a ring compressor. This one piston, number three, holding me up somehow. I haven't quite figured out what's wrong. Number two went in real easy. This one is not. I give me a little bit here. I'd be fairly symmetrical as I lower these on the level for obvious reasons. Number two is in all the way. So is number three. So now I've got the rings for both number two and number three into the pistons. It's a relatively straightforward process now. Let's square them up just a bit. I have to fish the cam chain up through the tunnel at this point before I'm going to go any further. There we go. The 
Fortunately, I have small enough hands that I can usually do this like that without creating a whole bunch of challenge for myself. So just like I did before, I'm going to take this brass tube, fish it through the chain, So I have tension on the chain. Now the chain is out of my way. The cylinder block is clear and I can go ahead and move to the next phase. So what that will look like at this point is I'm going to stop, come around to the other side and I'm going to reposition the camera. I'm going to crank the engine over in a clockwise direction to lower these two middle pistons bring the outside pistons up and essentially the two are going to meet and then the weight is borne by the, by the pistons and guided by the studs. So I don't have to try to wrestle all four of them, that is all four pistons, at the same time. I'm on the right side of the engine, I have my 13 millimeter wrench, I'm going to put it on this uh, bolt here, it's on the end of the crankshaft, I'm going to rotate it clockwise and that will bring these outer pistons, start to bring them up. The inner two pistons, two and three, is going to bring them down. Uh, consequently, this block will be lowered, and the cylinder block will be lowered to meet the upcoming pistons. Let's see how this works. Okay, so you can see there, I wasn't quite the top dead center, but I was close. So I need to make sure that uh, I don't get carried away and go too fast. I want to make sure that uh, this piston, number four, is lined up with the cylinder bore. So I need to go around the other side. There we go. Make sure these are nice and square as I approach the rings. The process here is very similar to what we went through a moment ago. Make sure each ring is started. Again, we got the, right now I got the first ring in each piston. Oop, I did have this, there we go. working my way back and forth to make sure that each piston is where I want it in this the block it's coming down straight. It doesn't take very long, I've done deliberately and carefully. It's obviously a critical step. This whole thing. Okay. At this point I have the top two rings in the bar on uh, the two outer pistons. So I'll just nudge it down a little bit more. So we've got to get to the oil control ring. I'm keeping an eye on the gasket too because obviously I don't want to get too rough with that. The reason I take this approach is I don't have to especially working alone, which I do virtually always, I don't have to worry about handling the weight of the, of the block. It's fairly stout. There are N and I'm very close on this one too. At this point, 
I've got all four pistons in the bar, rings are collapsed. So I'm in very good shape. This stage I'm going to continue to rotate the block. What will basically is force these rings up into the bore as you see happening here. A little bit right there. Again, take my time. I'm checking off four pistons as they're going in. Now the cylinder, the base of cylinders will drop right down into the bore in the mouth of the Essentially, it's done. So I'll just complete and you can see the pistons going up and down. So now I've got the black down all the way. I had to wiggle it just a little bit. These uh, oil passage uh, orifices, one on each side, and this is where it sits. Uh, act as a, a positioning valve also, so I had to do just a little bit of wiggling to get it to set properly down on top of it, which it is now. It's nice and tight. I could continue to rotate it. There's really, there's really no reason to do that right now. Uh, so I'll wipe it off a little bit and uh, get the assembly glue off the top here. And uh, that's really it for placing of the cylinder block on the pistons. So we should be good to go there. At this stage, I'll shift my focus now to the cylinder head because I have to do some valve work, which is really where this whole process started. I have to do some valve work on the head, which I will uh, document through video also. But this is really done. I'll cover it up now and make sure it stays clean and dry and no dust or debris from my other processes obviously get, get into the cylinder. So it'll, it'll just rest now for a while until I can get around to the... Uh, Cylinder head.